Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Well... <laughs> here we all are. Another day has gone by, and the ex-president still has not been indicted for making illegal hush money payments to a porn star. I... Yeah, I really thought I really, uh, really thought it was going to happen today. After all, Wednesday is cover up your hump day. <laughs> but we did get some some movement in uh, another one of the ex president's myriad criminal investigations because a federal judge has ordered former Vice President Mike Pence to appear in front of the January sixth special counsel's grand jury. <laughs> and, and yeah, I highly agree. And the reason we know this is good for the country is because neither Pence nor the former president want it to happen. The ex-president argued that his conversations with Pence fell under executive privilege, while Pence claimed that his role as the president of the Senate granted him legislative immunity. So, he was part of the executive branch and the legislative branch. You can see it all in the new movie, Every Job Everywhere, All Mike Pence. <laughs> Why, well, I... What prosecutors <laughs> really, really want to know is what the former president said to Pence prior to January 6th in order to pressure Pence to go along with the plot to overturn the results of a free and fair election. We know some of the things the ex-president said to Pence already about that plot, like, if it gives you the power, why would you oppose it? And you can either go down in history as a patriot or you can go down in history as a pussy. To which Pence replied, what's that? <laughs> Is that the lady area covered in caution tape? <laughs> of course, one reason this case may never come to court is that America might cease to exist because the GOP is refusing to raise something called the debt ceiling. And according to the Treasury Department, June 5th is the deadline to avoid catastrophic default. Now, I'm sure that's not good. But at this point, aren't we all a little catastrophed out? If you want to grab our attention at this point, you're, you're going to have to do more. <laughs> catastrophic. If, if you're going to need something scarier than catastrophic default, like gonorrhea Geddon or <laughs> please welcome Kanye West. Now, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what Congress should be paying for or what Congress should be cutting, but I do know that three weeks ago, the president proposed his detailed budget. And so far, it's been crickets from the guy he's supposed to be negotiating with, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy, seen here saying, that guy, he's Spartacus. <laughs> After weeks of refusing to release any Republican plan, yesterday, McCarthy sent the president a blame letter, writing, with each passing day, I am incredibly concerned that you are putting an already fragile economy in jeopardy. No, you're not. You know how I know you're not concerned? Because you expressed your concern in the form of the slowest possible form of communication, <laughs> a letter. <laughs> That's like saying, oh no, the house is on fire. Quick, someone hire a barbershop quartet to tell the fire department. <laughs> bum, 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 guess what's happening way down the street. <laughs> bum, 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 2034 Maple. <laughs> that smoky smell is not... <laughs> fire. <laughs> Barbershop Quartet never deserves applause. <laughs> the dumb letter is not an isolated incident. Uh, at a recent lunch, the Capitol McCarthy asked Biden when the two could sit down again and start negotiating. And Biden replied, where's the Republican budget? Yeah. Where is it? You can't start negotiating if you won't say what you want to negotiate. There's a reason ransom notes don't say, we have your wife. Send a list of what you think we should demand, or she, uh, okay, also tell us what you think we should do to her. <laughs> oh, uh, this is interesting. There's, there's some news out of Florida. Don't worry. They were able to safely extract the baby alligator from the margarita machine. <laughs> but also, a Florida school banned a Disney movie after a parent complaint. The movie was Ruby Bridges, a historical drama about six-year-old bridges integrating in New Orleans Elementary School in 1960. The film has been part of the school district's curriculum for decades, but this year, a parent refused to let her child 
see the movie and made a formal complaint stating, and these are the parents' words, the film, quote, teaching them racial slur. Kids shouldn't learn racial slur from school movie. They should learn from YouTube comment. <laughs> Ruby Bridges' story is important for kids to learn, especially because it wasn't that long ago. In fact, Bridges is still a civil rights activist. She's only 68 years old. You can't act like this is ancient history. 68 years old. She's the same age as Seinfeld. You wouldn't say, gather around, children, I'll tell you the legend of Jerry and his puffy shirt. <laughs> Somebody hit the bass. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this complaint is especially stupid, Dom, because the movie is an hour and a half long, but the parent only watched the first 50 minutes. I'm gonna say that seeing the whole story is kind of important here. Filing this complaint is like reviewing The Wizard of Oz with this 25-minute black-and-white tornado film is a total snooze fest. Kansas sucks. <laughs> Florida, I got another one. I got another one. Florida's not the only state banning wonderful things because recently, in a Wisconsin school, first graders were not allowed to sing a controversial Dolly Parton song about acceptance. Controversial? about Dolly Parton. She is a being of eternal light and rhinestones. The only controversy about Dolly Parton is, is she the best person now, or is she always going to be the best person forever and ever? Amen. <laughs> and here's, here's, here's what happened. A first grade teacher wanted her students to sing a lovely little song, uh, Rainbow Land, by Dolly Parton and Miley Cyrus, which school officials deemed uh, inappropriate. So let's hear these dangerous lyrics. They're afraid of rainbows <laughs> and being free to be exactly who we are. These are people who were not hugged enough as children. But you know who would hug them? Dolly Parton. <laughs> In addition... In addition to Rainbow Land, the district also initially blocked the Muppet song Rainbow Connection, although they later went back on that ruling once they learned that Kermit and Miss Piggy are in a traditional frog-pig sexual relationship, <laughs> as God intended. Now, <laughs> unsurprisingly, some parents out there uh, speculated the ban on both Rainbow songs was part of a greater crackdown within the school district on LGBTQ issues. Yes, because all rainbows are gay. That's why the school vending machine only serves gray Skittles with the slogan, Taste the Hetero. <laughs> now, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being told that we have a breaking news alert. We can now confirm multiple outlets are reporting do not copy Gwyneth Paltrow and blow ozone gas up your butt. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a volatile and ongoing situation, so if you have children in the room, let them stay, because they're going to love these butt jokes. <laughs> Here's what's happening from this actual news story. Earlier this month, Gwyneth went on a podcast and made the following confession. What's the weirdest wellness thing that you've done? I have used ozone therapy uh, rectally. It's pretty weird. It's pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> but very, it's been very helpful. Yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm sure it is helpful. Sometimes you need a little spritz of air to knock out that jade egg. <laughs> Turns out, look it up. Turns out, oh, God. it's a thing. Oh. Turns out, this, this is also, this ozone thing is a thing. According to the Cleveland Clinic, medical grade ozone gas administered through an ozone generating device can be inserted in your body in many ways, especially after the ozone generating device has had a couple glasses of wine. Uh, but I don't know why you would do it. Ozone is a toxic gas that is most famous for blocking solar radiation. So why would you stick it where the sun don't shine? Come on, come on. But does it make sense? Monologue length walk.
But rectal ozone has already had one benefit. It has inspired Gwyneth's hottest goop product. This candle smells like the ozone that's been in my butt. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Taryn Edgerton and comedian Jay Sanjasekhar. But when we come back, my wife Evie and I have some first drafts of Easter cards. Stick around.